Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Hello and thank you for joining me on another video. This was a test to see how well I could get the Norton method to work on a colored plate. Normally the Norton method is done on white tiles. And I was just kind of curious to see how well I could get shading to turn up on these darker colored plates. And as you can see, the results turned out very well. So I'll be going through a kind of a step-by-step -step process of how I was able to achieve this. Here are some of the different color options I was able to find at my local dollar store. And here's an image of my first demo run of trying to burn an image on these colored plates. It was just a straight black and white image. It didn't have any shading. I just wanted to see how well the black transferred. It's kind of the same process as with the white plates. Get some acetone, spend a few minutes kind of cleaning up the plate, cleaning off the, any kind of film on the top layer. Then I kind of just blow dry it. And I'll be using the same Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint that I used on the white tile. And I'll just spend a few minutes here blow drying the plate, making sure it's dry from the acetone, and shaking up the white spray paint. I applied the paint the same way I did on the white plate. Spray one even coat, kind of doing a 50% overlap, trying to get a good solid coat all the way down. I then rotated the plate, wanted to do 45 degrees, I kind of went 90 and had to reset myself. And then just did another quick pass, rotated another 45 degrees and did another second quick pass just to kind of fill in any little gaps that I might have had. And then spent about five minutes power drying it. Just keep going until I could kind of touch the edge of the plate and I wasn't getting any paint to lift off with my glove. Took my gloves off, kind of gave it a, a little firm rub on there making sure it wasn't sticky anymore and it was dry to the touch. It was going to be another half hour or so before I was ready to put anyways, so it had plenty enough time to finish drying. So we'll do a quick rundown on how I pre-process this image on my phone to send it to my computer. That I'm going to further process in GIMP to get it to the right DPI and size I want the image. But this is the original image. Now the first thing I do... I'll go to crop and this is on PixArt, a free app for your phone. We'll set it to a square. We kind of get the image centered where we want. Accept that. And we'll go to border. We turn the outer borders off and we'll pinch it to a radius. And so that'll put a black ring around the outside and we'll, we'll delete that out in background eraser. But for right there, that's looking pretty good. And from there, inside this app, you can delete out the background color and turn it into a grayscale inside this app. And also, a lot of times I might do some image adjustment right in here. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the clarity are a lot of big ones. Once you convert it to a grayscale, the saturation and hue no longer make any difference. You can adjust the highlights and shadows. And I kind of play around with all of them until I think I got the image looking good. So from there, so let's go to brightness, take it up a little bit, contrast, we'll take it down a little bit, clarity, we'll bring that up, highlights, don't change much there, shadows, bump there, take that down a little more. So now we got a pretty good scale of some medium tones to darker tones since we're burning this on a colored plate 
it's not going to show up as well as it does on a colored plate. So you're going to want to push the, all the, the colors a little bit darker so it shows up. So let's move them down. Move them down. Make it a little bit darker than maybe normally you would for a white plate. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now we'll go into background eraser. Load a photo. And we loaded that photo in. We're done. And go to the auto selection. And it'll delete out them background dog ears on there. Like I said, we're going to want to delete out all of this kind of light gray color around the outside just so the laser isn't trying to burn anything in there that's just making the burn time take longer and doesn't it'd be so faint you'd never see it and then like i said just so i know it keeps the right size dimension i'm going to leave in a couple pixels here at the very top just so it keeps the total height the same and this was already set to a square so i know it's not going to change so now i'm going to make sure i get this little bit of outer ring deleted off zoom back here in the bottom make sure i just leave a few pixels of color at the bottom so now when i set it to six inches I know this height wise it's going to stay six inches and then it'll make the width six inches even with this ring deleted it's a it's coming imported as a square so it'll stay a square So there we go. That's the basic image I'm going to be working with. So we'll just save it. And then I'd send that image to myself in Messenger and Im import it from there into GIMP. So everywhere that this is a checkerboard, the laser won't try to burn that image. It'll just skip over it so you can turn on your white fast base scan. And this will greatly increase the speed of your burn. The Norton method is a pretty slow method. You have to run about a thousand millimeters per minute on these diodes. So you always have to look for ways that you can speed up your time so it's not taking four hours to burn a six inch round image. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do my usual that you've seen in probably a lot of videos if you follow my channel. We're going to go to scale image. Turn this into a 318 DPI, convert it to inches, and just go 6 inches. We're going to scale that. We'll go to File, Export As, and we'll go 6 inch round. And 318 dpi just for future reference and hit export make sure you have the nine on the level of compression and export that now this image is pretty much ready to go so let's go over to lightburn and we'll import that image into lightburn now, if you watch my previous video on doing the Norton method on ceramic plates, this is the template I set up last time. You're going to want to watch that video if you haven't. And it just kind of goes over some quick size dimensions that I'm using for these plate templates. So let's go to import an image. Uh, and it's Kermit blank round 318. You see it snaps right in there now as i showed in my previous video i got the center of this image lined up on the center of like two grid crossings so i know i'm right 
where I want to be. You also want to make sure I sure I got this uh, outer ring that kind of covers up the edge. Just making sure that it's going to overlap the edge of this image and cover it up. So everything's looking pretty good so far. It seems like Lightburn likes to change your pre-made files for some reason. And you know, looking at that, it looks like I need to move the image up just a little bit to get that centered. We'll move it up one deal. Now let's zoom back in on that edge and make sure that that limit is staying inside that outer ring, that it's going to get overlapped. There it's right in the middle of it. And there it's right in the middle. So it looks like my outer ring is going to overlap them pixels for the most part. I don't think these lighter shades are really going to burn into this green plate, but we'll see. That's kind of the point of this test. Is I'll show you an image. I've burnt an image on these colored plates that was just straight black and white. And a straight black image burns just fine, but I want to see how a shaded image burns into these colored plates. So that's what I'm kind of testing out here. So I used, turned on this outer ring here to line up my laser and I'll clip in a little video of, you know, just showing that when I trace out that using the shift frame key here, it'll trace out that outer ring and make sure my plate is perfectly centered. With these 15 watt models, it's recommended that the focus height be 50 to 55 millimeters from the frame. I got mine focused in right around 49 millimeters. And here you can see my laser is framing around the plate really well. But at some point in time, I must have bumped the laser head and didn't notice it. And I knocked it out of position. You'll see here at the end of the video, my, my image gets a little off of center from what it should have been. So once I know I got it centered, I can turn off that outer ring. I don't want that on. And I want to turn on this green ring. But right now, it's set to burnt that first. I want to burn it after I burn the image. So I'll highlight the image and move it up in front of the green ring and make sure that's on offset fill. So now we're going to use the exact same settings I used on the white plate in the last video. It's 1,000 millimeters a minute, 85% power, 318 DPI, 90% scan angle, and newsprint dither. And we'll leave it on fill shapes individually. Uh, we're going to kind of take take a look at how the previews work. I don't really want it jumping around everywhere. I'd rather it filled this image straight across so that it's not jumping around. Sometimes when these this thing starts jumping around, filling different shapes, it can get slightly off in alignment. And if you're just burning plain text, it might not be noticeable, but if you're burning an image, it can cause problems. So let's fill all shapes at once, and that way it'll guarantee that it's just going to fill it from right to left and won't cause any alignment issues. So as you can see in here, all this white area, it's skipping, and the laser's not going to run all the way out to the edge of the ring. It's only going to try filling the image. So hopefully, and right now this is taking two hours. If I was doing a full six-inch ring and it was trying to fill the whole image, it would take almost four hours, judging by my last plates I did. And now you almost cut the time in half by deleting out that background. So it's a big time saver. And let's go check, make sure we got our fast white space scan on. I don't like to run more than 2,000 millimeters per minute, more than what I'm burning. 
Otherwise, the laser head can get really kind of herky-jerky, trying to speed up and slow down too much. But if, if I keep it within 1,000 to 2,000, it still runs pretty smooth. It won't kind of jostle the frame around. So we'll leave it at that 3,000 with the fast white space scan on. And the offset fill. Also, we're going to look at the shape properties. Now, normally, I'd call this image pretty good. I think it has pretty decent shading if it was on a white plate. But we're burning this onto a green plate, and that green is going to hide a lot of the more subtle shadings. So we're going to try darkening up the image just a little bit, get it to burn in a little deeper. So let's up the gamma to like about a 1.35 is like kind of a standard setting that I like to use and I'm kind of trying something new. But we're also going to try to kind of push the shades from the outer edges just to kind of, kind of give it a little more mid shade. So let's take the contrast to a minus 10. Normally I use a minus 15, but we'll see what a minus 10 and 10 get me. Kind of evens it out. And let's put in a little enhancements. Just 50 across the board kind of is a decent starting point. And that kind of makes the blacks, those black edges, pop a little brighter. It should sharpen up the image. So I'm going to call that good right there. Everything's kind of coming in okay. So now it's just time to run the burn, and we'll see how it does. As for this ring, it's set on an offset fill, so it'll fill in a circular pattern. And I'm keeping the same 1,000 speed, 85% power, 318 DPI. Light burn likes to shift that to 317.5 just because it's a switching per inch to millimeters it's slightly different and it kind of automatically changes that so other than that this one's pretty much ready to go we'll catch up at once the burn's over and we get the plate cleaned off and we'll see how this image turned out so here we got the image right after getting done burning I'm not sure. I must have bumped the head during filming uh, some portion and forgot to re-zero the head. And so my image got a little bit off center. I'll have to figure out how I did that. But as you can see, the image turned out really well. And I'll go ahead and go get it cleaned off. I'll clean it off with acetone just like how I pre-cleaned it. Just get a bunch of paper towels. Keep putting some acetone on there, wiping it off until you're no longer picking up any white paint or any black residue left behind. And then to give the plate a good washing with soap and water, and it should be good to go. I also forgot to do my little double the DPI and GIMP trick that I did in the last one where I should have set the DPI to 636 and then cut it in half and light burn to 318. So you can see... It got a little bit more dot matrix to it. Probably if, I, if I'd have done that double DPI, I think the dot matrix would have been a little bit finer. But it seems like after you clean these things off, it kind of smooths out the image a little bit. We'll, we'll take a close in look once it's cleaned off. Here we got the final image. I think it all turned out very well. All the shading seemed to transfer very well. I didn't seem to have any areas that completely disappeared anyway. And I also need to make note that I was using my 15 watt or tour. There's my 20 watt. Now, I tried the Norton method back when I first got my 20 watt. And I never had much luck with it. I just never could get the paint to fuse into the tile very well. Half of it would just clear clean off with the acetone. But since getting my 15 watt, 
the Norton method has been very easy to do. I don't have any problems getting it focused and just burning it in. Now, I don't know how the new fixed focus models are, if the new fixed 20 watt models, and if you have a NEDJ 30 watt or 40 watt, if those ones can do the Norton method okay. It seems like the smaller diodes actually do the Norton method better than the larger diodes. Like if you have the 15 watt model, the 7 watt model, and those are input powers, not the actual power of the laser head. They're actually only like 2 to 4 watts of power for the actual laser themselves. But anyways, I'd say it's a successful test. I don't really think there'd be any problem on any of the colored plates of getting the shading to transfer and doing images on colored plates. So I hope you found the hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please like, subscribe, share, comment below, and we'll see you on the next video.